Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. And today we are starting off at the KSC as per usual. And uh, with a pretty interesting looking rocket. And uh, the use of this rocket is going to be taking a submarine to Leith. Uh, yeah, well, I've not done a submarine yet on the channel. And uh, I think submarines are pretty cool. So um, that's going to be the plan for today's video. We are going to be taking... Um, yeah, a submarine, which you guys will see in a second, it's in that fairing right now, but it will be going off to Leith on this, uh, very weirdly shaped rocket, because basically those, those, like, side pods, like those, you know, with the nose cones on them, those, that's basically my, uh, my bottom stage, that's like the whole thing, and then I have a, uh, a five meter engine adapter, like the Saturn V piece with 16 vectors on the bottom. That's my bottom stage. I thought that'd be a little interesting, try something new, uh, interesting. I really like the look at this rocket, to be honest. Like with the fairing and the, the bottom, I, I'm a fan. There, look at me. Talking about how great I am. I'm, I'm pretty good at doing that. <laughs> um, I see most people are. Uh, but we're just uh, burning now. Uh, just burned out the bottom stage, and now we're going to fire up the second stage, which is going to be five vectors instead of 16 vectors. 16? Yes, yeah, 16 vectors. Um, well, this one's five. And then it's going to get us uh, pretty much most of the way to orbit. Uh, it will not get us all the way there. We're going to use a little bit of our nuclear stage, which is our interplanetary transfer stage, which will get us to Leith. Uh, we'll use a little bit of that to get into orbit. Uh, while we finish up our ascent, I just want to talk a little bit about um, our, the submarine and what its deal is. So, here I am going to be mentioning Matt Lowne again and how helpful he is, because he has, um, he's shown a way to create, make submarines very easy. I don't know if he discovered it or what the deal is or how long this has been known. Maybe it's not been known on the forums for years. I don't know. But basically, if you have uh, from, from the Making History DLC, if you use those like payload bays, I forget what they're called. You can see the submarine now. Uh, you can actually just clip a bunch of fuel in there and if you close the fuel bay, um, it'll um, it, uh, it, it just does some weird buoyancy stuff and like double calculates and it uh, makes you sink easier. Um, and then if you open the, the things, um, then you will float on up and become unbuoyant. So it's like a way of controlling how deep you go. And if you, it's really cool. So that's what I use for this uh, video. So thank you, Matt. A very, very helpful person. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll kind of explain what you guys are looking at right now. So the submarine is kind of wedged in the middle there. We have kind of like a sky crane set up um, to land the submarine with. Uh, it basically, you can see it has all those studs on it. it we use, um, we do use a little bit of the submarine's engine, which is a vector, a lot of vectors today, uh, to do our landing with. Uh, but mainly we use, um, we use the fuel from that top, that top kind of stage. And what we do is when we get, when we get close to the surface, uh, it has air brakes on it. So what we do is we just uh, detach the thuds, and then the, that stage will just kind of fly away. And then we'll just use the, the submarine's own power to land just the final few hundred me uh, meters uh, until we get to the ground. So just uh, getting uh, our way up to do our orbital, orbital insertion burn, rather, and I did kind of miscalculate my fuel, so I have too little fuel in my nuclear stage and too much fuel in my uh, that landing sky crane stage, so I do have to end up pumping some fuel. You'll see that a little bit later into the video. But, eh, you know, it's, it, was, it is pretty inefficient because of, I have a bunch of extra oxidizer then, and I didn't bring any uh, fuel drain valves, so that's kind of annoying. But I, I do wind up just ending the pumping the extra oxidizer into those Mark III adapter pieces that you can see at the top and bottom of the nuclear stage. So just finishing up the orbital insertion burn, and then we can get ready to plan our Julian burn to go to Leith. I could have just done the submarine on current, but you know. That's kind of boring. That'd be a pretty short video, wouldn't it, if I just, like, wheel it off the end of the, the KSC runway and then just right into the... That'd be lame. Very, very lame. So we're going to go to Leif. We could go to Eve as well, but Eve is just a disaster. It's really hard to do. And uh, you'll see, we do have some entry drama, or we... Yeah, entry. It wouldn't be re-entry, because we're just entering. Uh, we, have some, we have some drama with that, um, so I don't think it would work with Leif. But you guys will, you know, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, promoting my viewer, by the way, viewer retention on my last video, very, very happy about. So thank you. If you watched the video all the way through, very thank. And the last video, I'm referring to my fully reusable Saturn V. So thank you if you watched the video all the way through. Like a lot of people, like the average watch time last I checked was probably about seven minutes. It's probably lower now, but that is by far the most watch time of any of my videos. So I am very happy about that. Thank you guys if you if you watched the whole video. I don't. And I saw the number, I kind of started watching the video back, and I didn't think it was that engaging of a video. I mean, the first few minutes, I think, are fairly engaging, but the rest of it, you know, we're just going to the MUN. Everyone's been to the MUN, hopefully. 
or not, you know, you could just be starting out, you know. It took me a while to get to the one, to be honest, although when I got the game, I was, you know, I was very young, so I didn't really know what I was doing, but uh, it, you know, it can take a while to, you know, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, we're doing our burn. Uh, right now to do our, our trans-Julian injection burn, which is what this is. I did actually kind of, it's kind of stupid, but I run out of fuel with my stage, my nuclear stage, um, as I'm doing this burn, so I really didn't think that through all the way. Uh, my, my fuel, um, which stage got fuel and which stage didn't. So here I am just going to be pumping a little bit of fuel into the nuclear stage just so it can actually get, get you know, do the necessary burns that it needs to. So just finishing that up now and then we can uh, plan our correction burns. Some of you guys have all seen this a million times. Basically, if you, you know, if you watch my channel a lot, which I have a few regulars, so thank you. Actually, I've had a lot of people ask, not a lot, I shouldn't say a lot, but maybe, there's been maybe five, six comments or slash premiere comments um, asking about uh, Discord. Um, if I, if I, I'll, I'll make a Discord. Uh, my answer has always been when I have more subscribers, but honestly, the, for the amount of people that are regulars, like, I've had... I mean, yeah, I have. I, I could say there's like four, f four regulars, like four definite regulars, and maybe five, six, seven people who are there occasionally. But you know, I think you know we could have a Discord. I don't know. I just think it'd be it'd be kind of lame to have a Discord and then have like three people in it the whole time. Um, I don't know why. I, I, there really isn't a logical reason as to why I don't have one yet. Maybe I'm just lazy, but I am. I am strongly considering making one now. Um, and by more subscribers, I meant like 500 to 1,000, and we're at uh, about 191 as, as of recording this video. Thank you very much for subscribing, by the way. Um, we do have a goal to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you want to subscribe, feel free. Uh, that's just a personal goal of mine. I'm not like trying to... I guess I am technically asking you to subscribe, but um, that's just my goal. And in theory, we might be on track to do it, might not. It depends on how some of the next videos do. Um, because uh, if you if you don't know, um, subscriber growth is fairly exponential. So you 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 your your subscribers increase at a percentage, not as a flat number. Um, and I can get a little confusing, but basically, if the way it'll work is if I at the beginning I don't get a lot of subscribers, like the end, like if 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 we imagine the entire year up until you know December thirty first as a timeline, and the December thirty first is the end of the timeline. Like, my subscribers, depending on how I do, at December 31st, like, the last few days, like, the doubling, my subscribers start to increase at a faster rate as time goes on, basically, because exponential growth, that's what that is, it's a, you know, a doubling, basically. So that means, like, you know, at a certain time, like, I'm, I'd be getting maybe hundreds of subscribers, I, I'd get, like, I'd get up to 500 by a certain, like, by, like, probably November or something, and then it would double to 1,000 by, like, the end of December. Um, just, you know, based, you know, it's, it takes the same amount of time to increase the percentage, not as a flat number. That's probably confusing, but basically what I'm trying to say is if I have videos now that don't do very well, that could mean that in December, because my rate of growth gets really high at the end of the timeline, uh, relative to its current rate of growth, uh, that could mean that I could get to some horrible number like 700, which is way below my goal. Which I'm not saying 700 is bad; like that'd be amazing if I was 700 subscribers, but it'd be way below the goal. Or if these videos do well, I could get something like 1500. So it's a very dynamic situation, and I don't think you guys care. But what you probably do care about is this ridiculous lathe entry, uh, because I don't know. It must be something either the aerodynamic surfaces I have, or the, the fins basically. I have on the thing, or the, just because it weighs so much, like this thing is not big, but it weighs like 150 tons, uh, just because of all the fuel tanks I have clipped in it, the thing does not like to be stable on re-entry, like, I have those two, I have two heat shields, I'm like, oh yeah, these are going to save us, I, <laughs> I barely even used them, like, the whole thing just kind of whacked the airstream, like, I have no, I had no use for them, and, this is such a meme, we're coming down over the land, like, I don't know if you guys saw, like, and then I explode my engine, so I really have to, you know, do a quick save. But I was coming down over the land. What are the odds? Like, if Lathe is known for one thing, having a lot of land is not one of them. So basically what I did is I burned a little bit radial in, just so I can lower my periaps. Um, I did try wrench a few more times. It never worked, so I'm like, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll just keep my nuclear stage attached. That, might, that must keep us more stable at a retrograde. And then I forgot to deploy the 
um, the heat shield, so that didn't really help us at all. But I do deploy it as it starts to kind of flip out of control. So my, I, I experimented with a lot of different designs, and this one just kind of, it, it, it didn't work. It was really janky and stupid. But it, you know, yeah, I really don't get how it, why it does this. And then I just like, all right, yeah, screw it. And then look at this. It actually started to maintain a somewhat retrograde direction. So I'm like, all right, we have something good here. We're just going to go with it. Even though it is kind of janky and weird. I have that bottom heat shield that way. I could be completely useless now. But hey, better better to have it and have it not need it than need it not have it. That's, you know, that's what some people say. I just pop open the air brakes now. And then I'm just going to, yeah, we're basically, we're pretty slow now. So... I'm gonna get ready to deploy to a quick save. I did, I, I did, you know, try a few times of landing. I don't think you need to bore you guys with all that, but um, you know, there's a lot of like heat shields crashing into stuff and just stuff exploding, and it wasn't fun. Uh, but basically, as we come down, I'm gonna jettison the top one. The bottom one, when I jettison, just kind of hangs out. But when I fire the engines up, which I just have, that blows up, and then now I just have to come in nice and nice and gently because the problem is if I if I if I land and then I cut the throttle on the vector, the thing will explode um, because you know gravity will pull down and then the top of the submarine will explode. So I have to like leave throttle in as I come in, and then as I like descend into the water, basically. So you guys see that in a second. Right now we're just about to detach that thud stage. Um, the sky crane is basically done all it needs to do. And that will go away any second now. And actually, a pretty clean separation. You guys will see when it when it goes. There it goes, and it just flies off. And now it's just the submarine under its own power. It's not really a submarine yet, but coming in. I'm trying to come in super slow so I don't descend into the water too quickly and explode. So we're just nice and slow, nice and slow. And there's contact, and they're up again. Down, 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 and. We made it. Welcome to Lathe, everybody. Um, the water is all broken. <laughs> so first things I did, I just opened up the base so we can just float up a little bit. I just want to, you know, observe the surroundings. Just, you don't need to go underwater just yet. So there we go, re-emerging up. And there is a nice, good look at our submarine, which doesn't really look right because it has all of its bays open. But either way, welcome to Lathe, everybody. And what I do now is I just time lapse to the daytime because it is like late evening slash night right now in late time. So um, just get to the mornings or daytime so we can actually see what's going on. And one unfortunate thing that I never actually planned for, when I burned my fuel to land basically, um, I burned a little bit of the fuel that I had clipped in so they kind of made the thing a little bit unbalanced. Um, so you can see it's a little bit bond heavy and I need to use kind of, I need to use my vector to kind of flip me upright so I actually can, you know, descend a little bit in a more normal direction. Um, but the problem is if I fire the engine to descend me the right direction, I'm just going down even more. I'm, I'm unbalancing my submarine even more. But, eh, you know, we get it to work. Um, and another thing, is the, yeah, the water is just so broken. I think that's a scatterer problem. I don't know why the water is like that. It just feels like it. It is weird. But here we are, just kind of, this is the most normal the submarine gets, and then I'm like, okay, I want to get a screenshot. Um, I'm only, I wouldn't normally include this part in, uh, but something funny happens at the end. So I'm going to include me for like, you know, this is sped up, but you can see me just trying to find a nice angle to get a nice thumbnail for the video for. Um, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this right now because as, you know, I'm not paying attention to my, um, you know, my angle and my height and I'm approaching pressure limit and oh, explosions, explosions, explosions. Selfies are dangerous, kids. Selfies are very, very dangerous. You know what they say. But at least the Kerbal's alive. So, and now it has no more, nothing more to sink it down. So they're just going to float back up to the surface, which kind of looks like we're already flying. But, you know, who, you know, we'll make... We're floating back up to the surface, basically. So up, 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 up. Almost there. You can kind of see us re-emerging, getting ready to re-emerge. And we're up. Big bounce, big bounce, and flat. Curl, curl, <laughs> Very graceful ending to the video. I just that was just so stupid. I decided to leave it in. All right, that's going to be it. So I'd like to thank you for watching. See you next time, please write a comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, and bye.